Hey, my name is Brian Fisher here with Isotope, and today I'm gonna to be talking about a tool called Tonal Balance Control and how it can help you with your mixing and mastering at home. If you're mixing in a home studio like I am, you're likely working with an imperfect monitoring situation. Small rooms have all kinds of acoustic issues from comb filtering and frequency buildups to you know, frequency cancellation. It can be really hard to get an accurate picture of the low end of your mix specifically the sub frequencies. This is where tonal balance control comes in and is a lifesaver. Tonal balance control is kind of like a reality check for your mix so you can see how it stands up against other professionally produced tracks. All right, so first things first, tonal balance control is a reference tool that allows you to see the tonal balance curve of your audio. That is the distribution of energy across the range of audible frequencies. You can then compare your tonal balance curve to a set of targets based on different genres. Tonal Balance Control 2 has 12 different genre targets built on machine learning analysis of thousands of great sounding tracks. Just add an instance of it on your master bus and you can quickly see how your mix stacks up. It's super helpful to check your work and overcome the challenges of your listening environment. I often use this as a last step just to make sure that the low end and the high end in my mix is in check and sitting in a good place. Another great feature in Tonal Balance Control is the custom target feature. If you click here, you can go create a target from audio file or create a target from a folder. If you want to use a specific reference or a folder of references, to check your mix against. I use this feature all the time if clients have given me specific references for a master or a mix. For this track, I am gonna choose modern because I just wanna see in general how my low end and how my high end stack up against most modern mixes. All right, so I'm gonna play back a section of a track called Dangerous and Beautiful World. And I am starting in the broad setting instead of the fine setting because I just wanna see in general how these frequency areas are stacking up against the target. So the blue highlighted area is where you wanna be sitting. If you toggle over to fine, you can see sort of the generalized curve. Uh, this is the top of the range, this is the bottom of the range, and the brightest part here is kind of the ideal zone of this target. So I'm gonna go back to broad and play this back. All right, so already I can see that the low end is a bit lacking, same with the high end, and we've got quite a bit of low mids. So that's helpful to know right off the bat. There's also a solo function that allows you to listen back to those frequency ranges to see which instruments are dominating them. All right, so now I know the general areas that need a little bit of adjustment. I'm gonna play this back again in fine view so I can see some of the more specific areas that need help. All right, and one of the great features is I don't even have to leave this window to start making adjustments. So if you have an instance of any other Isotope EQ plugin, you can pull it up here in this window. So I have an Ozone EQ on the master bus before tonal balance control. And so I'm gonna go here to start with, and I'm gonna play this back and adjust a low shelf and a high shelf and some of these bands here to try and kind of nudge this tonal balance curve closer to the target.
I can also go into specific instruments since I'm working with a full mix. And if I want to bring up maybe the fundamental of the kick more, I can do that right within this window. I'm soloing the low band so I can hear kind of the changes I've made between the kick and bass. Awesome, so that is sounding good to me. So I am going to play a before and after and some of the changes you can listen for are increased presence of the shakers and cymbals and the airiness of the vocals uh, from the high shelf boost, increased power and fullness in the low end of the kick and bass from our low shelf boost. You're gonna feel the kick a bit more since I boosted the fundamental of the kick and a little bit more clarity and kind of less murkiness in the low mids from the attenuation that we did there. So here is before. Another really helpful feature is the Crest Factor meter. Crest Factor is the difference between your peak level and your RMS level. This tells you how dynamic your audio is. Tonal Balance Control includes a meter specifically to tell you the Crest Factor of your low frequencies, which can tell you if you've compressed them too much or not enough. To the left is more dynamic and to the right is more compressed. You want to be sitting right in the middle here so it looks good for my mix. Looks like I don't need to make any adjustments there. Typically I use this to make sure I'm not over compressing my mixes or masters so the low end remains punchy and defined. Like anything in music, it is very subjective and up to individual taste. So don't take these targets too literally. Just use them to make sure you're making informed decisions. Thank you all so much for watching. If you wanna try out tonal balance control for yourself, you can go to isotope.com and start a free trial. I'll see you guys in the next one.